Today, I'm going to be giving you my three tips on how to master F1 23 as fast as possible. I've been fortunate enough to play the early versions of the game, and now I'm in full training for the Formula One Esport World Championship. So, I'm going to give you my early intuition, my early feedback from the game on how I go about adapting my driving style to master it as fast as possible. But that being said, let's hit the track. The first point I'm going to be talking about today is the curb usage. The curbs have become much more slippery and easy to lock up the car. As my example goes, you can see on F122, the car would have easily been able to slow down in that exact scenario. This doesn't mean the curbs are unusable. You can still use them in many ways, just as much as F122, but you can no longer be so aggressive on them. You have to treat them with respect and also make sure that you don't wheel spin, lock up the tires, or even have car sliding moments that can lead to time loss while on the curb. Like I say, you can still take a lot of the Sasha's curbing, as I'm gonna show you coming through Max and Beckett's on this example. Side note, Cops is very satisfying flat out. But as you can see, I'm gonna attack the curbing. The car is not unsettled in the slightest. So you can take the curbing as aggressively as you could in F122, but although the car will slide and that is where you can lose the lap time in relative to the previous game. In my opinion, the most efficient way of using the curbs at the moment F123 is the ability to brake off them in most cases, but accelerate on them in pretty much every single case. Most curbs on the inside you don't really want to use in the middle of the corner. Unless you're taking an easy flat out corner like Abbey at Turn 1 in Silverstone for example. But you can see, not breaking on the curb. I don't really bother touching the curb on the inside because I know it's going to be pretty slippery. And again here, I miss my apex a little bit, but nevertheless I accelerate all the way on the curb. Um, but I would not have wanted to take the curb on the inside at all. The second point I'm going to bring up today is the brake bias. If we go back to the garage, I'm going to show you in highlighted detail within the setup page. The brake bias is defaulted to the 63%. Previously on the Formula 1 game, it was running at 50% and every single track, pretty much every single corner. Whereas in this game, if you run 50%, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm not even just going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to show you me spinning. As soon as I hit the brake pedal, it will basically be uncontrollable. You can see, on the brake, boom, instantly span. If I go, and now I put the brake pedal all the way up to, let's put it to default, 63%. 63% is a good balance where you can still lock up the front, but the rears are going to be pretty safe. You're going to see that the car is pretty st stable into the apex, but can suffer from a bit of understeer. But now I'm going to put it to my ideal bike brake bias range, and that is between 57 and 53. 53 is only really usable in a qualifying lap scenario, so more likely 55 is the about right balance for a racing scenario, or a consistent car at least. If you're looking at the rears, of course put it forward to 56 or 57, but you can see with 55 brake bias, the car rotates into the car, and car rotates into the apex very nicely, I should be saying, that way around. To summarise the second point, like I say, previous iterations of the Formula 1 game, their brake bias was very simple, whereas this game, it has a large ability to either gain or lose lap time to competitors, whether that be the AI or lead racers, or even a five lap hot lap races against random people online. In my opinion, we all want an advanced over a competition. You might as well learn brake bias and take it from them. I'll be doing many, many follow-up tutorials on how to maximize braking efficiency, so be sure to stick around for that in the future of this channel. My third and final point of this video, where my face cam on the other side of the screen, is actually the most important point of the video, in my opinion, and that is gonna be the tire temperatures. They have been completely overhauled the F123 game, revolutionising the way that you go about monitoring, nurturing and caring for your tyres, both in a qualifying lap and a racing scenario. In F122, it was basically a standard thing. You would do about the same tyre pressures for every single compound. 
in every single track, in every single race, and it would do pretty well to be honest. Whereas in F123, you have to run different tyre pressures per different compound, per different track, per different condition. It is going completely overhauled, and by far is one of my favourite features in F123. This is going to take a lot of skill to master, but for example, if I slide into the corner, you can see the car is overheating the tyre significantly and losing grip. If I lock up into a corner, the same will happen. If you lock up in a braking zone, the front tyres will overheat and lose traction. If I just put full steering lock, you can see it overheats massively. The surface of the tyre doesn't really want to go above 110 degrees. If it does that, you're going to be losing significant amounts of grip overall. And like I say, we do not want to be losing any lap time. To summarise my point, you can see I'm rolling at a very low speed and they fall into 61, 62 degrees on the surface temperature and that's going to give very poor grip, obvious statement, I know, but it's more important than ever and I cannot stress enough about having the tyres in the green operating window at all times possible is more critical than ever for lap time. You want the tyres on the surface to be above 70 degrees and never above 110 degrees. And that goes for the carcass temperature as well. Although it will be much more difficult to overheat the carcass, it is still extremely possible. And when it does happen, you'll be losing significant amount of grip, lap time and confidence to go with that as well. You can see, once the tyres are still underneath 110 degrees, they're producing good grip. Once they go over underneath 110, they start to slide and lose a lot of grip, traction purchase. And like I say, confidence will naturally fall because of that. So, so this has been my quick three tips on what I've noticed and how I'm adapting myself to F123 as fast as possible. If you found these tips helpful, be sure to comment down below what you'd like to see next in these tips and tricks little series on F123. I'm happy to cover any topic that will make you feel more confident and faster as a driver as well. Until next video, I've been Brendan Lee. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get back to practicing and I will catch you next time. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.